Good evening and welcome to 16 by 9, The Bigger Picture. It's something we all worry about. What diseases are we likely to get in the future? Well, now you might just be able to find out years in advance. It's being called a revolution in healthcare, where your saliva will be able to predict genetic disposition to disease. Here's our Carolyn Jarvis with this exclusive story. Within all of us is a unique genetic barcode. It maps out not just who we are, but what we are. Well, what if by scanning that code we could foresee our medical future? Know years in advance whether we're susceptible to diseases like breast cancer, multiple sclerosis, or Parkinson's. What was once a high-tech research tool is now available to almost everyone. It's the first time in many, many years that people can actually take control of their own life at a health level that they could not do before. Internet tycoon Josh Migelski spent $1,000 back in 2007 to take his first DNA test. Oh, I learned so many amazing things. You have no idea. Um, it told me, for example, what my risks were for certain kinds of cancer. It told me what diseases I was at risk for overall, but also what I'm really unlikely to get. All he had to do was spit into a tube and ship the sample to a lab in California. Two weeks later, he received a report outlining his genetic risk for certain diseases. If you know what your DNA says, you can take steps today to change the way the story ends. Jeff truly believes he is changing his story. So he's altering his diet and taking supplements to counteract the conditions he's genetically at risk of like macular degeneration. If you have a certain disposition to, of being something, of turning out a certain way, and you have the power to change it, isn't that a good thing? Because you can then take control of your own health. You can take control of your own life. The kind of testing Jeff had done is the result of a 2003 breakthrough that changed our world. That was when scientists for the first time sequenced the complete human genome. It took $3 billion and 13 years to finish, but it unlocked a world of information into how humans are made. And like with any such scientific milestone, biotech companies were hungry to cash in. Today, three principal companies offer direct-to-consumer DNA tests. They charge between $400 and $1,000 to analyze a small portion of your genome. For that, you'll learn about your ancestry, your biological traits, and the biggest draw, of course, your genetic predisposition to certain diseases. I would have to say of all the things I've done with my health, doing genetic testing was probably the single most valuable thing I've ever done. In fact, Jeff is such a proponent of DNA testing, he's had his whole family done, from his 91-year-old grandmother Elsie to his 9-year-old son Joshua. What he created was a veritable DNA family tree, explaining traits as simple as eye color to their susceptibility to the norovirus, even who has a better chance of becoming a world-class sprinter. And when Jeff and his wife Mocha started talking about having kids, DNA testing was a prime consideration. There's certain things like Parkinson's or um, MS, things that you can't control the outcome of, you might decide not to, or cystic fibrosis is a pretty scary disease as well. It, if you were going to pass that on to your child, then maybe you would second guess the decision to have a child first. It's that life altering predictive value companies are banking on to sell their tests. Dr. Joanna Mountain is the senior director of research at 23andMe, one of the first consumer DNA testing companies based in California. The one big question has been do people really understand this information? Should they be given access to their own? information and the paternalistic response in the past has been they're not ready people are not ready for this information we responded 
why not? She isn't shy about proclaiming we're on the cusp of a medical revolution. This is something that n people do not get in any other way, and, pe and people consider it very valuable information. While there's no Canadian lab actually performing these tests, earlier this year, the first ever personal genome service launched at a clinic in Toronto called MedCan. It outsources its testing and charges $1,500 for its service. So we asked our 16 by 9 producer, Mary Perrone, if she'd be willing to look into the medical crystal ball to learn her future. Mary begins by meeting genetic counselor, Jill Davies. Hi, Mary and Jill. Hi, Jill. Nice, nice to meet you. you. Come on ahead in. She's asked a series of questions about her health background. Well, we do have a history of cancer in the family. When we look at the family history, though, we're always looking for any patterns or indication that a disease may be due to a very strong genetic cause. Um, and in that case, there would be a significant increased risk for other family members. And then comes the tricky part. Are you ready to do the test? Um, yeah, I'm yeah. ready. What you're going to need to do is fill uh, saliva to the line here. Okay. So it'll take you a few minutes. Yeah. <laughs> the test takes longer than you might think. If you uh, kind of do this with your cheeks, it might help a little bit to generate some. Uh, okay. So do this? Yeah. <laughs> you can generate some saliva. <laughs> but after about 10 minutes, the sample is complete. There we go. And then it's ready to be sent off. Great. Two weeks later, Mary will be given a rare opportunity to discover her risk for diseases like cancer, Alzheimer's, and heart attack. Coming up on 16 by 9. We'll show you the results of our producer's DNA tests. Plus, we'll delve into the ethical debate surrounding this game-changing technology. And we'll meet the geneticist who says this is all irresponsible hype. At the present time, the data around much of the GWAS studies are not ready for prime time. That's next. Welcome back to 16 by 9, the bigger picture. With a simple saliva test making it possible to predict what future disease you might come down with, the big question remains, what do you do with that information once you have it? And can that information actually be bad for you? Here's Carolyn Jarvis with part two of DNA Prophecies. If your body is a car, and consumer DNA testing is simply looking under the hood. That's the view of Harvard professor of genetics, Dr. George Church. We met him in Banff, where the leading minds in genetic testing gathered to debate its virtues and its risks. Just a few years ago, we just had to live with that ignorance and treat everybody fairly similarly. But now, with the cost so low, the ability to really know how we differ from one another, how one car is different from another. We don't have to treat all the cars as if they have the same parts. And that's a real opportunity. And I think that's why it's going to spread so quickly in the next couple of years. George, I love you, but you're dreaming. Other experts believe bringing personal genome testing to the masses is fraught with danger. Renowned geneticist Dr. Michael Hayden calls it recreational genomics for the curious and the rich. The hype around consumer direct testing, really many of the things being offered are really uh, uh, not all that important for health and then the relative risks that are associated with this at this time uh, are very small uh, and it's very hard to know what to do with that information. That's because the results of this testing often indicate increased risks in mere tenths of a percent. Not solid enough data, he says, for anyone to be basing lifestyle changes on. I'm saying from a health point of view and incorporation to a healthcare system like in Canada, we need to show uh, that these are appropriately validated and useful for the practicing clinician everywhere. Uh, and at the present time, the data around much of the GWAS studies are not ready for prime time. There's also the concern that information could actually harm a person's health. What if a woman who lacks the genetic mutation for breast cancer decides to forego a mammogram? That's it. On the flip side, 
Another person who has an increased risk of heart disease could take on a fatalistic approach and decide it's not worth cutting down on salty or fatty foods because the outcome is inevitable. As scientists and ethicists debate the issue, what's clear is that DNA testing is taking off and could one day end up on the same drugstore shelf as pregnancy tests. It could be as far off as 10 and it could be as sh short as one. Years. And one year. And the reason I say one year, very few technologies take off in one year, but there are examples like the World Wide Web, which in 1993, it went from zero websites to millions of websites. And I think this is a similar thing. This I'll, is as exciting, this is as big as the internet? I, I'm not sure it's as big, but it's, I, I'm saying it could spread as quickly. But is a personalized DNA assessment really the panacea some experts would have you believe? Not according to Timothy Caulfield from the University of Alberta's Health Law Institute. We met him in a place he says a patient's money would be better spent. If they're looking for actual health benefit, join a club, buy some healthy food, um, maybe get a personal trainer for a couple of weeks. You're probably going to get more from a health perspective, immediate benefit out of that than you are going to get from, I think, from uh, a genetic test. People already know they're not supposed to smoke. People know they think they're supposed to, you know, they're supposed to work out. No one does it, right? So the question is, are people going to change this because the information is genetic? I'm, I'm skeptical. And for many people, not knowing what the future holds may be more comforting than knowing. Professor Caulfield was offered DNA testing for free. He turned it down. I thought I would overinterpret the data, right? You know, so I didn't want to know if I had a susceptibility to Alzheimer's. I didn't want to know all these things, you know. So it's, it's kind of funny, like, here's a really good <laughs> example. Yeah, so I decided oh, I don't want to get tested. There are also questions to consider about privacy and who should get access to DNA data. What would happen if your insurance company learned about your increased risk for certain diseases? Could DNA testing be used to deny benefits or compensation? There are laws against genetic discrimination in the U.S., but none in Canada. I was nervous about this. It's been two weeks since our 16 by 9 producer, Mary Perone, decided she wanted to know what diseases she was genetically at risk of. Her saliva sample was sent to a lab in California for analysis, and now she's about to get her results. So let's get started. Okay. Any of the orange boxes are conditions where you've come in with an elevated risk. The initial findings show that Mary's at a lower risk of type 2 diabetes, melanoma, psoriasis, and colon cancer. Then comes the question she's been waiting for. What about Alzheimer's? I think this is kind of the, the single biggest reason that people may have anxiety about the test, and, and mm -hmm. everybody usually hones in on this one first. But, I was nervous about this, yeah, I have to tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you actually came in lower than the population risk. While Mary isn't flagged for any life-threatening diseases, there is a concern about obesity down the road. Um, with the obesity, we looked at two uh, genes. Um, and again, for the risk marker, the first one you had two copies, the second one you had neither copy. Um, so lifetime risk went up slightly from 32 to 38 percent. And this. So if we zoom down here. Oh, okay. You're actually genetically lactose intolerant. No way. Really? Yep, That's so incredible. You're, you do not produce the enzyme that breaks down lactose. A simple finding that prompts Mary to make an adjustment to her diet and a report that leaves her feeling reassured. I feel like I can take a little breathe of like a sigh of relief right now. <laughs> but even with the information in hand, a prediction is not a diagnosis. So there's no telling whether risk will turn into reality. Still to come on 16 by 9. It's not only it's just an issue of 100 million sharks being killed a year. It's an issue of what happens to the ecological balances, uh, and they tend to be all negative. We need to be thinking that we're actually destroying the Earth's ability to carry humans. And with 6.7, almost 7 billion people on the planet, we simply can't be destroying the systems that we depend on for survival. That's next.